Hey everyone, welcome back. My name is Sam. And I'm Melissa. I grew up in the FLDS community. It is a polygamous group run by Warren Jeffs, and I moved out when I was 18 years old. I was raised LDS. Sam and I have been married for nine years now and have two awesome kiddos. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We are very excited today to introduce a new series that we are doing. I had a great opportunity to go out to my hometown, Short Creek, and visit with Mike King from Profiling Evil. Had such a great time with him visiting multiple different locations throughout the town and discussing what his experience was like versus what mine was like. The very interesting thing about this is Mike was a police or a law enforcement officer that spent a lot of time in Short Creek dealing with the FLDS people and trying to learn a little bit more about who they were and trying to help some of these people that law enforcement felt needed some help. And comparing that to what I thought about law enforcement and my experience while I was there during the same time that he was there. Yes, I'm really excited to see this. I wasn't able to go out with Sam this time. I was at home with the kids, but this is going to be really fun to see you two like compare stories. Mike is such a great guy. We've been on his podcast before. He's been on ours. We'll leave that link above if you want to see more about Mike and the amazing work he does in protecting particularly children from some of these small extreme groups. Yes, he is just a fantastic person. We had a great time. I feel like I was just hanging out with my buddy talking about my <laughs> my good old days, right? But this first video that we're going to share with you today was us standing right in front of a home that was built, the purpose, the primary purpose for this home was built for the many wives of Warren Jeffs. And also a part of this compound, I guess you could say, because it's all surrounded by these big thick walls, which we'll get into a little bit in this video. But there was a separate part that was uh, behind even extra security, beyond the security that you have to get into the main part <laughs> that was for Warren specifically that, so that he could hide from law enforcement and basically so that no one could get through the extra security to get to him. So very interesting place, which this was the first time I had ever stepped foot on this property. So we're excited. We will start the film and then we'll kind of react. And I, like I said, I'll give some reaction and then also some behind the scenes insight from Sam as far as what it was like with Mike King. So yep. here we go. Well, hey, everybody, I'm Mike from Profiling Evil. And I'm Sam here with Growing Up in Polygamy. And we're here at the home of Warren Jeffs. It was a newly constructed home, Sam, yeah. that he never got to see. But this is your stopping ground. This is. In fact, my home is just, I could almost throw a rock to it. Back in my day, I could throw a rock to it, but not anymore. <laughs> but yes, it's just around the corner here. This home, I actually was under the impression that Warren Jeffs stayed in it at one point. But I recently learned that it was built after he was incarcerated. So that was new to me. Yeah, that's right. In fact, if folks go back to one of my earlier videos, You'll actually see imagery where I put uh, when this was just nothing but a field and then different stages of the construction because back then I was investigating the FLDS, Warren Jeffs, and my nemesis, Willie Jessup, is the guy who ended up owning this facility. Yeah, how about that? I remember Willie very well around the town. He was one of, I guess you could say, Warren's right-hand man. You know, he was doing a lot for him and, and you know, it's interesting to see that now Willie has come in and help so much to turn this community around and take it away from Warren Jeffs in some way or another. You know, Willie and I were mortal enemies. And uh, <laughs> of course, he was trying to protect the prophet. He served three prophets as bodyguard. He started as a young boy with Johnson uh -huh. and then uh, became Ruin Jeffs bodyguard and then ultimately Warren Jeffs bodyguard uh, and uh, became state's evidence against Warren when he discovered that Warren was raping children in the yearning for Zion right. uh, church building that, the, that was built down there. But Willie personally told me about this experience and the fact that the walls, and we're going to be looking at some imagery that I took with the drone yesterday of, of the construction of these things, but these walls were built from a vision that Warren had while he sat in prison in Texas, Whoa. and that vision was to have these high walls. Now, listen to a few of Willie Jessup's comments about this fortress that he built for Jeffs. Well, the walls are clear concrete, or white, all the way inside. It's got more steel in it than anything you can imagine. You could hit them with a full load of dump truck and hardly crack them. Panels are steel with lining to keep it from being so we could protect him from 
assassinations and that kind of stuff. You'd have to go to get to his house. You'd have to come from through this wall, through that wall, to even get to the house. So, like I mentioned, you have to get through two gates or two walls in order to even get to Warren because it was so secure. And this was something as a as a boy growing up in the FLDS church that it was so secretive, way beyond what most everyone in the FLDS church was aware of. Like this second wall, I never even got close to getting through the first wall. Not that I tried, but if I had tried, <laughs> I had no idea that there was a second gate behind it. So a lot of this stuff that Willie Jessup is very familiar with, I had no idea. And I believe most of the people in the FLDS church weren't familiar. All I knew is that these huge white walls popped up some for some reason. I assumed they were trying to keep something secret, but I never knew exactly what was going on behind those walls, as was the case with many of the other big walls around the community. Was that really common knowledge like with, around the community that Willie Jessup was the bodyguard oh yes because okay and i'm like for that to be such like public knowledge like i'm guessing that the prophet of the lds church i know they have security mm -hmm. you would never know the names you know it's kind of meant to look like they don't really have security even though we know they're there kind of blending in not really seem like a big deal let alone the names do you know if that's just because that's like within church history that there was like bodyguards for previous prophets or like why it was such a big deal to make sure that everybody knew about this bodyguard. I don't know that it was uh, such a big deal that everybody knew so much that it was just we always saw security and people armed, in most cases, around the leaders of the church. Okay. So we would just see them here, see them there. Um, also, one of my sisters married one of Willie's brothers, so oh. we had that roundabout connection as well so maybe we knew a little bit more than other families but not not that Willie was telling me or anyone in my family that I know of about the ins and outs of what Warren Jeffs was up to once again I had some of my own brothers that would help Warren Jeffs in some ways and I would never hear about it it was so secretive it wasn't one of those things where you would go home at night and you know, hang out as brothers and talk about what you're doing for Warren Jeffs, <laughs> right? If you were, if Not you were, pillow talk. <laughs> yeah, if you were in the know with what was going on in Warren Jeffs, you didn't talk to anyone else about it unless they were also involved very directly in that. And he said that these walls were meant to like keep away assassination attempts. Were there any assassination attempts that you know of? Not that I know of. No. Okay. Because that's another thing, like this idea of like kind of that paranoid mentality that mm -hmm. everybody's out for you because you're God's mouthpiece. So therefore everyone's going to want to kill you. But I can say from being like in a community 45 minutes outside the FLDS, nobody like until there were secondary crimes that we found out about, nobody cared about this guy who said he was a prophet with this community out you yeah. know, out in the middle of nowhere. Exactly. And so assassination assassination attempts definitely never heard anything about that. But I did know that law enforcement was after him and they were trying very hard to get him. We knew that he was on FBI's top 10 most wanted. So there were these things that we knew about. And so the big gates and fences made sense to me, but I didn't know of any assassination attempts. Not saying there weren't. Maybe there were some very angry people that were upset that or maybe they found out what they were doing to their daughters or, you know what yeah. I mean? Like there could have been people out there that were very angry with him, but not that I heard of personally. Do you know if they were built, like these walls were built before or after Warren was on the FBI top 10 most wanted? Like, was it in, I'm on the run, so we're going to build these to protect me? Or was it him being in fear because he knew what he was doing was wrong? And like, I might need these someday, so I should build them now. So the walls around this specific house and compound were built after we knew that he was on the run. Oh, okay. Uh, to my knowledge, if I'm getting my timeline correct there. <laughs> but other big walls started going up like like the home that is now the dream center that I knew Warren Jeffs lived in. And even while I was a child and War and his father, Ruland Jeffs, was still alive, he was living there. And so I knew for a fact that that was his home. And we built up these big walls around there before he was running from, this, from the law. So okay. there is this feeling that I have that Warren Jeffs had a plan. And he knew that by executing this plan, mm. it was going to bring a lot of attention eventually, and the law would be after him. And so that's why he started securing the properties. That makes sense. Okay. It's not completely 
unseen in Colorado City? Oh, no, it became very common, actually, especially around the homes of those that were high up in the church, not necessarily just the prophet, but also leaders, the bishop and other people. And it was interesting because it was when Warren took over or just before his father died that all of a sudden we saw all of these walls popping up. And so that's, that says something about who Warren was and how he wants to keep everything secretive. That's crazy. You know, I, I've done a little bit of construction around my home. I've had new driveways poured. Cement is expensive. <laughs> it is. And we're looking at walls that uh, are, from what I've been told, 18 feet tall. Now, I don't know, maybe they're 12 feet tall. And uh, with the extension, that. maybe close to 18. But these walls are two feet thick in right. some areas. Imagine the cost in just putting walls in, let alone building a home that would house at least 87 wives. Right. It was helpful that everyone in the community did some kind of construction. And so everyone here, not everyone, but a lot of people owned construction companies. And so there were concrete companies and all the other things you would need to build a house that they would do, and they would do it for Warren for free. That is crazy. Now, uh, we're, we're looking at an image of, of me flying a drone in a 360 degree radius around the building in the complex right now. And out on this east end is a, a number of condominium type units that were set up, not only for some of the special wives, according to Willie, but also visiting authorities from other reaches of oh, okay. the FLDS. So if the leadership, Blackmore, for instance, in the early days uh -huh. came from Canada, it was a place where he could stay. Wow. And, uh, and so and then as, as we continue this flight and we're looking at it, we also have this, this area where Willie, or where uh, Warren Jeff's home actually was, which isn't where his wives are living. Why don't you explain kind of the, the layout here? Well, Warren Jeff's at one point had about 80 wives, though there wasn't really a house big enough to hold all of his wives at one time. And so it was one of those things where he did have some of his wives living with him in his home before he was put in prison in his other home. But uh, the one we're standing in front of today was going to be an extra one for all of his wives so that he could have a place for all of them to stay. I don't even think the drone footage is doing justice to how huge mm -hmm. these places are because that first, that main home looks so like, it looks like, oh, that's the big home. And then there's the two small homes next to it. And it's like, no, that main big home that you're seeing in that drone footage is now a hotel. Yes. Okay. Just to give you an idea. So like when you're looking at the drone footage and you're like, oh, and then the two small houses next to it. No, the houses that are next to it that they're talking about, like that's where Warren just actually lived. Like how many square feet do you think that is? Oh boy. I wish I had that exact information. All I know is that large. I never <laughs> planned on going inside of this home, but my good friend, Mike King <laughs> said, Hey, why don't you come inside? And, 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 uh, you know, I don't know. I just, I was nervous about feelings that I might have going into a place like that, but it was crazy. So I did and nothing bad happened. Just FYI. <laughs> it's it's just a hotel now. But but I walked in and we walked up and down some of the hallways. We I got to see some of the different uh, places throughout this home. And it was built like a hotel. It's got these mm -hmm. long, long hallways, rooms on both sides. And so it was ba primarily built for just people to live there with just huge amounts of people to live in this home. So anyway, it was definitely very easy to convert it to a hotel because of that. But yes, I have no idea how many square feet. Just imagine very, very large. Yeah. And those other houses that look like they're small houses next to them are not small. No, those are like normal size homes, you know, if not bigger than your average. And then you see this, the mansion size home on the, on the side of it. Well, and, and in this layout that we're looking at now, and as I take the drone, we're going to kind of fly toward the way in which Warren's bodyguards would have brought him home okay. when he came home. And of course, he comes through this outer gate, which again, uh, we got these 18 foot cement walls, but out, and that outer gate was secured by a large metal door. And as you came in, that door opened and kind of like a sally port in a jail. When one door closes, then another door uh -huh. can open. Right. So that's when... Warren's uh, gate into his residence, which is just to our right, folks, uh, would open up and he would pull in with security officers all along the way to protect from, from what's going on there. So as they came in, they would go one sally port or one metal door would close, securing Warren inside of the compound. 
But then the compound wasn't good enough. He had an internal compound that he would then go through another metal door and into where his residence was. And to, to go see the wizard, for lack of a better uh -huh. term, was a big feat. In fact, what was that like as a kid to, to run into the prophecy? Oh, man. Well, it was interesting. It got, it got less and less likely as time went on. When I was a very young boy, I actually spent time in his home, spent time in his father's home, and shook his hand and said hello multiple times with him. And, and that was just an honor. It was a huge honor to be able to meet them. But as time went on, you started to see these things where even the home that he lived in before the law was after him, the gate would open. There was a big wall around that house too, and the gate would open, he would drive in, it would close before he even got into the garage. So it was very common for him to just be almost invisible. We never really got to see him as time went on. Well, folks, Sam and I are going to travel around in Hillville, Colorado City, and we're going to give you a chance to see things from our perspective, the cop's view and the kid who lived in a polygamous community. Well, wow. Okay, that's so fun. I'm so excited to see all of these and be able to react, react with you on all of them. How much fun was it to just go to like all these different sites? It was it was awesome. It was I've been to all of these sites before. I think we have about 12 of them. So we have a lot to come everyone. Mm -hmm. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope you enjoy the future ones. We got to see a lot of different places, a lot of great scenery and some places that brought back a lot of memories for me that I haven't ever had on video before, like the zoo, for example. So that will be coming up later. But it was just a really unique experience, but what made it most unique was the fact that I was walking around and going to these different places with Mike King, and we get into this a little bit more in other videos, but you know, being law enforcement, not only being from the outside world, but being in law enforcement, he was not welcome. So the mm -hmm. fact that I can now be good friends with someone that would have been my ultimate enemy during the time that I lived there is kind of unique and kind of cool. And I really enjoyed being able to have these conversations with him and some of the feelings that he had while being in the community. Uh, you know, so that was very unique and I had a great time. Yeah, well, we are going to be releasing one every single week. Like Sam said, there are 12 episodes coming up. So every single weekend, we'll have a new episode for you to see more of Sam's hometown in Short Creek perspective, the cop versus somebody within the community. And if you want to hear more about what it was like for Sam growing up in polygamy or see more episodes like this, then please like and subscribe. Yes, thank you all so much for being here with us today. And if you are not already, please jump over and subscribe and check out Profiling Evil. Mike has a lot of great content content there as well. So thank you so much. And we look forward to talking with you soon. Talk to y'all soon.